Go on. Yeah. I come from a family of um, upper middle class people. They're professionals. Yeah. They're all teachers. Yeah. My grandfather on my dad's side was a headmaster. And at the school that he was the headmaster, he met his wife. Yeah. That's because she was a teacher. And they got married and had a family. Well, all of them, the, um, two of the, is the, them died in a lightning strike on the house. Wow. Yeah, lightning struck the house that they lived in and killed the two of the girls. Where's the house? Where is it? This was in um, a, a, a place called St. Thomas. In, okay. Yeah, in Jamaica, mm -hmm. in the parish of St. Thomas. Anyway, they are the family. Um, all the girls and the boys became teachers. My dad was the youngest one. Yeah. And he became a teacher as well. But he got the best education out of them because by then they were so established yeah. that they could afford to give him the best. Oh. So he went to the best training college in Jamaica and he was one of the top performers of the college. And <clears throat> he didn't want to do teaching. He was like a rebel. Okay. Okay. You know, there's always yeah, the one. Yeah, the there's family. always the one. Well, Go on one to yes. all the family way. <laughs> yeah. So what he did, yeah. he went and joined the police force without telling his dad. Without telling his family. Yeah. And he, while he was in the police force, he was um, sent to a, um, a station in, in St. Saint Anne's. And he met my mom. Okay. She was a teacher. Okay, fine with the teachers again. She was a teacher at yeah. St. Anne's Bay. Yeah. School. And he started seeing her and they got married. And I, the family. There was my sister. Are you the eldest? No, my sister was there. Yeah, of so. Then me and then my brother, the three of us. And, um, when I was leaving Jamaica to come to England, my dad came to England. He, he was in England for a while. Yeah. He was in the area. Okay. Because he came over to study dentistry. Right. Your dad, yeah. So your dad's been a cock. He's been in the RAF and yeah. now he's going to be a dentist. He came over to be a dentist. Yeah, yeah. And joined the, the, the RAF. Yeah. Yeah. My dad was a wild one. Was he? He couldn't settle at nothing. Right. But when he was a cop, they went out drinking one night. And on the way home, he was driving the, the car. A drunk, a drunk driving cop. <laughs> and killed a man. <gasps> Shit, man. Shit, man. Yeah. Wow. So That's the end the of the Yeah got involved then and they paid at the time Norman Manley who ended up being Prime Minister of Jamaica mm. was a QC. Okay. He defended my dad right. and got him off. Wow. How did he get someone off with drunk driving, killing someone and you're a policeman? You know, the law, the law, you know it's, Money does things. It's Jamaica. Any part of the world you go. Yeah, yeah. Any part of the world you go, money does things. Who you know. Who you know. And, but he also studied law. Your dad did. <laughs> He's a wild, he was a wild one. Yeah. You know, he was a real wild one. Very, very intelligent man. Yeah. But he misused all of it. You know? Yeah. He could have done anything he wanted to do. 
Do you think he was an artist in some way? You know, mm. could you think he was maybe an artist in some way and that's why he couldn't settle to one thing? Did he do anything artistic like draw or Not paint no, or sing? No, 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 no. No? No. He just couldn't um, settle? He just had so much um, going for him. Mm. <coughs> but in the end, um, he was discharged from the area um, because of um, he had um, ulcerated stomach. Okay. And while he came home from the area, the, he was flown back to Jamaica, straight into the hospital, the army hospital in Jamaica. Okay. And we used to have to go and pick him in the hospital for the first six months that he was home before he was, he was allowed to come home. That's a long time to be in hospital. Yeah. So when did you come to England then? I came here in 1961. So how old were you then? I was 18. Okay. Because mm, I could travel on my own. Okay. So when did you first what, did you did you go in the Reno before you was the DJ or did you go in the Reno as the DJ? I was the DJ from Jamaica. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um. How I got into music was there was um. Excuse dad, me one minute, please, while I see if I can take this shadow off you. Yeah. So you was a DJ when you came from Jamaica? Yeah. And that is down to um, my dad again. Because what happened, my dad knew so many people. Yeah. That on certain days, like on a Sunday afternoon, he would arrange for his friends to come and play music in the yard. And they were all top musicians like that were famous in Jamaica at the time. Oh, okay. You know, Roland Alfonso, Don Drummonds and all that. They used to come, they used to cook up, and they used to eat and drink. And did your dad play any of the musical instruments? No, he them? didn't. Oh, this was he problem. just liked the company? Just, as I said, my dad was this person who knew so many people. Mm. For some reason, he ended up being connected to all these people. Okay. He just loved his music, obviously. He, he loved music. Mm. And one day he told me, I was about 12, when he said that they were having a dance. Okay. So we got the place prepared for this dance. They also prepared for this dance. And the music people came in. And it was a sound system by the, that was called B Rocket. Okay. Which was the top one of the top sound systems in the eastern Kingston where we live. And when the dance started, I was fascinated by this DJ. Right. I just liked the way he was playing the music that I love listening to. Yeah. And I stood by him all night. I didn't move but <laughs> was watching him yeah. all night. Yeah. Really fascinating. Yeah. What about like everything he did with his body as well? Everything. Tell tell me what he fascinated you. I fascinated with the way he looked. Okay. And how we you know, you know the songs he were choosing. Alright. It's like when it got one thing that is stuck in my mind ever since and I never forget it. It was coming up to midnight, and he played this record that he played was a tune called "It's Almost Tomorrow." <laughs> but what can I do? You know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then when he, that tune finished, yeah, on the stroke of twelve, yeah, he put a tune on called "Midnight." Oh right, so he's aware of everything. Midnight, yeah. I spent another lonely day thinking of you. 
Yeah. You know? And I'm saying this guy is an artist. <laughs> you know? To come up with a concept like that. Yeah, he's not just playing music. He's not just playing music, yeah. he's something deeper. Yeah. yeah. You know? And that was it. I was hooked. Yeah. And I said to myself, I want to be a DJ. Did you? Yeah. So how did you set about becoming a DJ then? When I got into my teens, yeah. I used to go out with my friends. I used to go down to um, this barber shop. Just to hang about, as you know, as a little place where we meet outside yeah. the barber shop. Yeah. And next door to the barber shop was this yard. And in this yard, there was this guy. He had a sound system. Okay. And he used to play music in the afternoon. So that drove me over to, you know, and then I start, I, end, I work myself into playing, the, putting the tunes on for him. Did you just ask him, can I play yeah. tunes? Yeah. And he said, yeah. Yeah. And I just started there. Just like practicing. Yeah. Like, yeah. So then, in the, in the my formative years, I started doing parties, right? Teenage parties, yeah. You know, all my friends have been a party. There's a guy called Austin Hartley. He used to go around and get in the parties book. Oh, okay. And the two yeah. of us used to go up and you know and play. So, know, did you parties. have in mind, you know, your DJ that you loved before? You know, did you kind of like try to play like him? To the play to the way, time and the to play to the room. Music yeah. And the mood. Yeah. But not only that, I was interested in American speakeasy clubs. Okay. This wasn't, there weren't discotheques. No. There were places where people used to go on late night. Yeah. And sit down and have a drink. Yeah. And listen to music, either live music or, you know. You just made a live music. What is the place for people to go and just have a drink and talk? So how did you know about speakeasies though? Where have you seen them on, on, on film? Yeah. Yeah. You know. So tell me which film you seen your best speakeasy in. I can't really think that far back because yeah. there's so many. Yeah. But that was the style. That yeah, I that's the style to, you wanted. To fit into. To let, yeah. Just to see people sitting down. Yeah. Having a conversation. Enjoying yeah. some nice music. And working it to that way. I was never a discotheque DJ. No, you weren't. People didn't understand that. I was never a discotheque DJ. No, that wasn't the experience. But oddly enough, the experience of the arena was a bit like a speakeasy. That's what I created. <laughs> yeah, no. That's what I created. It's, it's how you've seen, yeah. like people have mentioned, the Cotton Club or mm. Goodfellas or something. It had that feeling of a, a speakeasy. speakeasy. And that is what I wanted so, to create. So you're thinking like, um, oh, what's our, what's our guy, the bad gangster films? Mama, I'm on top of the world. What's his name? Why is all our memories mashed up? You mean um, Cadley? Yeah. Have you got? Have you got like where they're going to? What, is that what you've got in mind? Then kind of gangster speakeasies. Yeah, no, not gangster. Yeah. You know what I mean. Yeah. The thing about um, speakeasy places. Yeah. Don't care how your day went. Yeah. And what problems you have during your day in your life. Yeah. When it come night, you go, you sit down, have a drink, listen to the music. Yeah. And when you you come out feeling refreshed. Right. And that's what I set out to do in the arena. Okay. But it's, way, way back when you was a teenager though in Jamaica, mm. you've set out, this is what you're building yourself, this is, this is what you're practising. To be like. Yeah. And I was lucky enough, this is why I stayed at the arena for so long. Yeah. Because I was given the opportunity to do what I want. And if it had been seven nights a week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, mm. Thursday, Friday were my nights. Yeah. Not even so much Friday. Yeah. But those Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, yeah. Thursday, they were the nights that I enjoyed. Right. Because people used to sit down. Yeah. And just listen to what you're playing. Yeah. 
there was a few dancers that people always love to dance. Yeah. But the music that it, that I was playing was to set that scene. Right. That anybody could come in off the street, <coughs> sit down, have a drink, <coughs> and listen to the music. Right. So it wasn't really entertaining the dancers. It was entertaining the people who didn't have the gumption to go on the dance floor. Okay. And dance. Don't let everybody want to dance. I'm a dancer, man. Yeah, well, well, <laughs> yeah. you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, 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 yeah. So that was the idea yeah. of what the arena concept was. Right. Come Friday and Saturday, then it's different. Yeah. Become a disco. Okay. Thing. <laughs> you know? Yeah. And yeah. then after a while, I got fed up with the discotheque scene. Okay. Because I wanted to do what I'm doing now, which is radio. Right. Because on radio, you can play anything that you want to play because you're not, you're not entertaining a dance floor. Yeah. You're entertaining people who are listening. Yeah. You know? I want people to listen to music. Yeah. The contents of the song, the style, and the way it's set up. Because I am reflecting the work of these musicians and artists. And in those days, black artists weren't being given the opportunity in the media to express these, these truths. Yeah. You know, the commercial thing took over. Yeah. So my job was to play what is not commercial. Wow. But good. Yeah. If you stop and sit back and listen, you understand what music is all about. Little did they know in the arena that I was educating them. <laughs> You're educating me now yeah. at this minute. Go on. Yeah. So yeah. they got the education yeah. about music without yeah. realizing yeah. that it was an education. Anyway, that was my opinion. Yeah. And my idea. So it's like a science to you though, then. Yeah, isn't it? it? Is it's like a science deep, to you. It's a deep, deep science. Yeah. So when you went home, did you also think about your music? Sounds a stupid question, but did you plan ahead? No. I no. Never, you go with your feelings. I never you wouldn't believe this. Yeah. When I walk into anywhere to play, mm -hmm. I don't know what I'm going to play. Yeah, I do believe that because you go going with your instinct. I go with what comes. Yeah, and what you feel from the crowd. Yeah, you know. And the room, I suppose, yeah. as well. Sometimes I ignore that. Okay. The reason why I ignore it is that if you don't ignore it, people don't move. No, tell me what you mean. Like I noticed on Saturday night, mm -hmm. and all the nights that I played since I came back. All right. That we don't play the same kind of music, same tunes that they all know for years and yeah. dance to. They don't appreciate it. No, it's true. I don't. It's because I've got older and I'm now set in my ways. So when you go to any of these um, dudes, yeah. the same tunes, as they say, is that's all that's they listen to and play and dance to. Yeah. Because there's no time to sit down and take in music like they used. So the arena was a, such a unique place. Yeah. It allowed people to sit and listen. If they went in in the week. Yes. They get a good musical um, background. Yeah. When Saturday night, Friday and Saturday come, it's different. It's mm. a different thing completely. As I said, it becomes a discotheque. Yeah. But even then, I used to break tunes that other DJs wouldn't even look at. No, definitely. The Reno is one of the only places where I've danced to a record I've never heard before. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's like, yeah. wow, I get on it from the minute it yeah, starts. Yeah, because it, it was carefully selected. Yeah, to go with the rhythm of everything else, the, yeah. of the place, isn't yeah. it? And also, it allowed me 
to bring other people into who were interested in playing music yeah. into the scene. People like Cooley, yeah. Kenny in Germany, right. um, Dr. D, yeah. Ewan Clark, yeah. um, Tom Blin. Yeah. They all learned from being in that situation. And all of them will tell you the same thing. They learn about it from me. You know? Yeah. And that is some um, praise. What, what, that's what I set out to do, to leave something behind. You know? I you and Clark we... wasn't a soul DJ. Okay, what was he? He was, you know, where you used to listen to soul, he used um, to be in the Nile. Oh, of course. With reggae. He did, yeah. And then he used to do jazz. Right. Is when he came in the arena, he listened to soul for the first. But he was at the Ascender. Yes, he was. He was DJ at the Ascender. But one of the girls that was on the door in the ticket office at the Ascender, Penny was her name. When she used to leave the Ascender, Every night she used to leave the Hacienda and come straight to the Reno. You know, she was a Reno head. <laughs> and she used to bring her crew with her. Right. A group of them used to come down. Would well, they know her if I seen a Persian? Because you know I'm bad with names. Well, I, on Saturday night I asked you and about her and he said the last time he saw her she wasn't well. Oh. Okay. So he lost touch with her. Right. You know. Okay. But um, there's a lot going on about, you know, that's, this is what the reader is all about. But most of the kids that used to come in, they were too young to, you know, because they were, they were thinking that deep in old mm. life or anything to yeah. do with it. Yeah. They were just out playing for the enjoyment and meeting <laughs> the pals and having a good time. Yeah. So I was there in the background, unconsciously to them, yeah. feeding them with this um, thing. Political tunes as well, weren't you? Mm. You know, with like messages in them. In the music. In the music. In the music. Saying really powerful things, actually. Yeah. It's only recent, you know, that I started to understand that. Mm. You know, as a grown-up now, mm. listening to him in a different way, like you're saying, I'm not dancing, I'm not just like a room of friends. And like Milton or Phil Collins put some, you know, on Facebook. And then, because I'm listening to him in my bedroom, mm. I hear what's being said. <laughs> you mm. know, like, which I didn't hear when I was dancing. You know, I just kind of got off. Just you know, what, what, what would be nice now? Yeah. I'm on Radio Diamond, which is the internet radio. Yeah. And a lot of people don't have time to do that. If they tune into the internet radio on a Sunday afternoon mm -hmm. and on a Monday morning, if they have the time, if they're not working, yeah. and listen to my show, they'll understand what you're talking about. What I'm talking about, because the music that I'm playing now yeah. is far superior to what I played before, because there's new music. Yeah. You know, beautiful music I'm playing now on the radio. So where do you get your music? That's the question. Mm. Right. Because you're a pioneer at the time, because lots of people sample the music you were playing then now. It's all over the place. It's kind of quite mainstream. But at that time, yeah. where did you first hear, how did you hear it to bring it to us? That started in Jamaica. When I was a youngster back home, because of the affluence of my family, I had access to, you know, good um, radios. Oh, okay. We had, so my, the radios that we had were German radio, telephone came, which was a top make. Yes, I know that thing. meant, yeah. It, that came before the blue spot. Okay. But telephone came, we had the telephone came radio and radiogram. 
So you, on the dial, you can go, you know, pick up vast amount of okay. stations all yeah. over the world. And I used to tune in. There was three stations that used to fascinate me. One was the, the American Armed Forces. Oh, okay. Because they used to get all, I love boxing. Used to get all the boxing yeah. on that on a Wednesday night and on a Friday night. The big fights I forgot. Yeah, it makes me think of my dad going, yeah. go on, Cassius. Yeah. You know, like on jumping mm. and everything. Go on. I, as a kid, I yeah, was yeah. picking up there was nothing yeah, yeah. to that. But we're on the music scene now. There's two radio stations. One was in Ecuador. Okay. And one was in Peru. Because the so American the American stations didn't play um black music that much. It was all Dean Martin and yeah. Eddie Fisher and all, you know, mm. white men mm. imitate trying to imitate black music. So I used to tune into these stations. One was called WI NZ, but they said they didn't say NZ, W I N Z. Right, and Z, yeah, Z. okay, yeah. You know, for the Z, Z. Yeah, yeah. And one was W-R-U-L. And you used to get all the black music that the Americans never play. Wow, that's amazing. In mm -hmm. Ecuador and Peru. Peru. <laughs> that's crazy. You know, so that's where I get it all from. Wow. You used to have like yeah. black American music, hmm? black American yeah. singers yeah. that we got to know. Yeah. Was play wow, go on. And I always remember this. There was a tune that came out called Mr. Lee. Mm -hmm. I still got it. Right. By a group called the Bobbits. Right. These black girls. Yeah. You know? And stuff like that was coming over. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, not King Cole. Yeah. Um, Ella Fitzgerald. Right, of course. Know, all those. Dinah Washington. Yeah. You know? I still, I was doing them. I, um, I was doing a, a, a two hour thing on um, Radio Diamond. Yeah. On a Wednesday, playing. Black female artists wow. from the fifties, forties yeah. and fifties. But I stopped because it was it was taking me out of you know too much going out, you know. Too much research. Not research, I had all the music. Oh okay. I still have got all the music. But what was it doing then? It's just that I'm always being Sunday, Monday and Wednesday. Oh, too much time. Too much at the time. Yeah. I still intend to continue that in the near future. Yeah. Maybe in the summer I'll start it up again. Yeah, yeah. But They're unbelievable, aren't they? Some yeah. of them female black singers. If you listen to what they, you know, basically because what was happening, they used to have these songwriters, beautiful mm. songs. Most of them were white men mm. writing some fantastic music. Mm. You know, lyrics, and um, melodies, you know, Jerome Kern, um, Oscar Amistine, Rogers and Art, mm. um, Ogie Carmichael. You know, I could go on and just yeah. And they were writing some beautiful tunes. But nobody could sing these tunes like these black women. Oh, no. It's like the hearts. Sarah, but we listen to Sarah Bond sing. I was going to say Sarah Bond before. You know, there was Sarah Bond. Mm. Um, um, one of my favourite, favourite, where he's um, Cry Me a River. Yeah. Yeah, yeah but or At Last as well. You know, yeah. like when, there's, when the, the, they don't even need music, the music's in the voice. The voice. In it, yeah. You know, like, and it just, it just gives you goosebumps. And you can feel them, feel it. I've got all those yeah. notes for music yeah. to do the show. Yeah. But I intend to start it up again. Yeah. Maybe in the summer. You know? So it's it's about telling, you know, taking people all the way through the music scene. Like a history. Black music history. Yeah. 
Yeah. You know, and bringing them, let them see where it's all coming from. Yeah. And then I used to also do a spot where um, they talk about R&B. Yeah. What we're listening to is not R&B. Okay. R&B was started in the 40s. Right. You know. So who's typical R&B then that I would know? You ever heard about Louis Jordan? Yes. Um, King Pleasure? No. Um, Roscoe Gordon? No. All oh, right, so I've got to kind of keep going because people will listen to this and start, yeah. people who are really into music. Yeah. All these guys, they started R&B. What they were doing was R&B. It's rhythm. And the blues. Okay, it's the real understanding of that word. Yeah. yeah of that sentence. Yeah. Rhythm and blues. Rhythm and blues. Yeah. Combined in the two for the first time. Right. Because before we did that, that didn't exist. Yeah. So it's because blues is blues, isn't yeah. it? Before that, blues is hardcore. Oh, before blues. the rhythm side comes into yeah. it. Yeah, yeah. And these are the guys that put that started it. Wow. Fantastic music. I'm gonna to have to listen to these now, you say. You know? Yeah. So um when it comes summer, I intend to start it back again. But the problem that I have through the internet it goes all over the world. Yeah. You know, so the people who are getting the, the benefit of what I do now are not in um Manchester. That's not a problem. Why is that a problem? I would still like Manchester people yeah. to receive this music, you know. And the only way they receive this music is they tune into Radio Diamond. But they're more tuned into the radio. No, it's not. It's an old-fashioned thing, isn't yeah. it, the radio, the idea yeah, of that's, it. Yeah, that's what they mm -hmm. listen to. If I... For a short fee, for one month, Rita Diamond was on the, on the airway. Mm. It was Black History Month. Right. And for that one month, a few people heard what I was doing. And they still listen to what I do on the, on the internet because they realize that what I was doing is what they want to hear. Mm. Um, so there's quite a few people who are listening to what I'm doing now. Yeah, because it's hard for you really, because nobody wants you to move on, do they? Including me. Mm. Do you know what I mean? It's like, no, don't play that. Just play Reno tunes. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So it, is, Reno, like, it, must be, it is, must be funny for you. But Reno tunes... Yeah. There's new Reno tunes. Yeah, but not to me, there's no... Not to the <laughs> No, no, it's, I'm like, it's like, no, no. They're not in that speakeasy yeah. um, situation. Well, this would bring them... Oh, I the see speak. what you mean. If the they're listening. It's, the situ it's not just the music, is it? It's the situation mm. of a cellar club, yeah. right, of all of us who we were at that time. time. Yeah, and the music. So if you was playing the tunes you're talking about, the new tunes in there, would we would become, have accepted it, yeah. but we, then it's yeah. not there anymore. No, exactly. You know, and what we would like to have is a situation where we could create that speakeasy feeling, feeling once yeah, more. yeah. You know, but if they were listening to the internet radio, because a lot of people don't use the internet for radio. No. They use it for all the other different purposes. Yeah. Yeah, but the internet. they don't yeah. realise that it's better than listening to, say, um, Legacy. Why? Oh, listen to you with your competition. Why is that then? Mm -hmm. Why is that? Why is it better than Legacy? Because of the DJ that's on. You've got Gordon West as well, haven't you? We've got Gordon West. But he's an ego tripper as well. Oh my God, he's just going to rubbish people now. All he's coming off is um, Gardner West, Gardner West, Gardner West, and all these 
He's got this American connection with people like Sister Sledge and other artists mm -hmm. um, saying him, he make them do it. Um, you know, voiceovers for him. Brilliant, though. He's just promoting himself. He's though, promoted he? He himself. He need to do that these days. He promoted himself very well. Mm. But it becomes annoying when mm. you listen to radio. To me, anyway. Because mm. it's about music. See, you, you, you're spoiled and we were spoiled because mm. we had, like you said, that situation, that place, seven nights a week, right? to create a complete vibe yeah. where you didn't have to promote yourself you mm. stayed still and you just got in your zone mm. and you played your shit didn't you and people came to you we came to you and then people came on top of us do you know what i mean like mm. to hear the music as well mm. it was yeah yeah talk about coolie a bit oh yeah you know we became, he became like a son oh. to me. Because Cooley wasn't a very, um, what do you call, he wasn't, what do you call, um, self assured in any way. Okay. And I know the feeling because. If you don't speak to me, I don't speak to you. Yeah, I know. I'm very shy. I know. Very quiet. Always, I just like to be in the background and just mm. observe. And then it's so cool, eh? I was doing, I used to play the Shubin and Muslainese. And he used to come in and stand near to me oh. while I'm playing. And I could see me in him yeah you know very quiet very shy very reserved not very um sure of himself and the reason for that was the way his bigger brother used to treat him chris We all know what Chris was all about, didn't we? <laughs> Kevin's going to get dead upset, the other brother. Yeah. Well, they're family, aren't they? Brothers do yeah, things brothers. to brothers, don't but they? <laughs> when you can see when a young lad is not getting the deserve, desired um, guidance from his elders, and then he, he didn't have any self-confidence. Yeah. Anyway, Bruce used to speak mm. and I had to go somewhere one night and I said, will you play some music till I come back? Yeah. He said, you go on. And he said, yeah. Well, I bet he was made up, man. He was made over the moon. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And he started playing. And from that, we had him playing, teaching him how it's done, how to do it. Yeah. Timing. Yeah, you yeah. You know, all that. And he'd pick it up very quickly. Yeah. You know? And that was it. We got, we started working just together. But then, the problem started when his friends started to take advantage of him. Like what? They got into his life too much. Okay. He was with that girl, um, Jean Rowe. Yeah, I like Jean. And when he went to the house, when he, every time I went to his house to see him, I could see what was happening. He had all of them in there, all through the night. Mm. Oh, cool, very cool, you know, bigging him up and taking advantage of his lifestyle till she drink couldn't take anymore of that. Right. 
so they wrecked his life. They don't acknowledge it. I know what went on. He was so taken in by the adulation of him mm. that he forgot about himself. Okay. He was getting so much involved. I'm trying to get him to give up all the bad things that was around him. But it wasn't working because they were dragging him into it. Because I wanted him to go where I was going musically. You know, I was trying to get other places open. Okay. That's why I went trying to play at um, that um, non alcoholic club. Sobers. I met an um, ex professional footballer called Norman Sykes. Okay. Who became a very close friend of mine. And he opened this nightclub. And, um, and he wanted me to come and play in the club. So what we did, I used to go on a Friday night and leave Cooley at the Reno. And on a Saturday night, and I used to do an all-nighter in the sobers. So that if it worked out, yeah. we have two places yeah. where we could earn money right. in the end because I was trying to make us into a unit. Yeah, a business. A business. Yeah. Because there was also Rodney and Cooley. Rodney and um, Speedy, who used to help me. Mm. You know, and Dennis. Mm. But every time that I tried to move mm -hmm. and do something, Cola from the arena, Phil's nephew. Yeah. Try to put a stop to everything I tried to do. Why is that then? He was jealous of the, you know, the, what was being created. Okay. I don't know what is overall. He, in the end, he tried to get rid of me. This is why they tried to take all the equipment from me. Um. So what happened was, I got um. A call from this African man that had um, the Unity Club in Oldham Road. Mm. They wanted me to come and play in there. But I had no intention of leaving the arena. Right. So we, I set, tried to set it up where we could do both clubs. So what I used to do, I tried to get Dennis to go and help me with the, with the Unity. Yeah. And cool and me, coolly in the arena, and I move between the two places, setting things going to make sure. But Dennis backed out. Why? You know, it wasn't the arena. Mm. The fame, you see, ego is a big thing. Mm. They don't realize that it's hard work being a DJ, if you're a proper DJ. Mm. You could stand there all night and play to one person. But that's your job. Right. You don't have to have a, a, a room full of people to be a DJ. You learn by bringing people in from by what you're doing. Yeah, which you did in the Reno, but yeah. didn't you? but he couldn't understand that, so he backed away. And no, I can, I can understand what he's thinking, though, as well. Because mm -hmm. as you're saying it, I'm thinking, but you're the Reno. Mm -hmm. you, do you know what I mean? Like, don't go nowhere, but the Reno. Mm -hmm. But I suppose if you're not getting paid properly, and stuff, yes. then you have to try well, and make a business and a, you have to, a you have to, Yeah. You have to try and make yeah. it work. Yeah. But you can't do the, what I was trying to do. Yeah. I needed loyalty. Right. 
and there's no loyalty in their association with me. Yeah. They came to be around me because of the arena and the fame that the arena would give, bring them. The only yeah, but one, that's what I would have wanted The to only do. one that didn't do that was schooling. Right. Because he wasn't me right from the beginning. Right. You know? Yeah. But you and him are the Reno to me. Yeah. We are. Yeah, but when you say I was going to play an older in Unity, it's like, oh, no, don't do that. Mm -hmm. Only play. But but I, I understand you to, need money, though. I had to, to try and make money. Yes, so exactly. Was, you need money, of and, course. You know, yeah. So... I was fighting a losing battle. Yeah, you would be because hardly anybody paid on the door, you know, in the Reno. Do you know what I mean? And you didn't the get, yeah, exactly. You didn't and get a cut of the profit. I wasn't working for the money. The Reno. Yeah, yeah, but you do need to eat, you do need to pay your rent. Yeah, you need to live. Yeah, yeah. And same with all of us. Yeah, yeah. You know, so if I don't take myself up and try and open up a venue yeah. which might give us some. Financial, um, yeah, security. Um, I wouldn't be doing my job. Yeah, that's, and that's what, what I was trying to do. Yeah, but I remember when you were you used to be in the Reno, you know, because like I understand now what you're saying. You used to be like, Where's Persian? Oh no, it's not the Reno to me. Mm. Yeah, but um, <clears throat> you go Cooley, hand in hand in my mind. Cooley and was Cooley. A fantastic. Mm. Student mm. for the music. He's a fantastic he, DJ yeah, as well. He loved music. Mm. You know, and he could put it together because yeah. I taught him how to put it together. Mm. But it's just his instinct though as well. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like you could you could teach me all day, Persian man, it's going one ear and out the other. And I love music but I'm rubbish at but species. What it, it did be, for yeah. me, it released it, it released me. Mm to try and do what I wanted to do. Mm. You know, because if I know that the cool is there, mm. that's taken care of. Yeah. And then I'm trying now to find other ways yeah. of opening up other venues where we could go and earn some money. Yeah. It's a bit like Starbucks, isn't it? Mm. You know, like you're creating a brand exactly. and then to take the brand around. Because what I used to have to do sometimes is go to Leeds mm. um, and Bradford and play for friends. Yeah. You know, Derby. You know, those are, you know, because people used to come to the arena, yeah. hear what I was doing, yeah. and wanted me to go and play at the dances. Yeah. So they put a dance on. Yeah. And I had to go and play maybe for the week. Yeah. And would they go down well? No, they were brilliant. Yeah, yeah, you get paid proper. Yeah. Yeah. They were brilliant on uh, nights. So you needed, yeah. See, I see everything that you're saying because there's only one person, that's you. Two people, that's Cooley. You need mm -hmm. more bodies, more mm -hmm. help, more, mm -hmm. yeah. Because yeah. there's only so many days in the week to earn the money. Mm -hmm. It's only two bodies. Yeah. Yeah. The Reno, though, it was more than it's you, it's you, Cooley, the music, the actual building itself, you know, like, and us. And that couldn't, that to me, I don't know how true this is, that to me couldn't be created anywhere else but there. No. This is why I stayed. Yeah. And not only that, it's to my people. Yeah. You know? What do you mean by that, then? Because it's not just colour, you don't mean that. No, I don't mean... No, no. Tell me what you mean then. I mean the people who have the... What do you call it now? Our mind mm. to want to come. Mm. Because when you think about it, it was the only cosmopolitan club. Mm. People of all walks of life and all creed, colour, whatever, used to come to the arena and feel comfortable because of the scene. Mm. The, you know, the um, speakeasy. That, yeah, that vibe again. 
that was creative. Yeah. It made me come in, we can relax. Yeah. You don't have to think about who is there. You just find your own little corner or wherever. Yeah. And just have fun. You know? Also, students from the university coming to Manchester from all over England to study. And what made it brilliant was, I think it was about um, I don't know. About 1980. Yeah. This was 1980 and 1980, 81. Yeah. No, 1980 or 1979. Somebody brought a copy of the Manchester University Prospectus to yeah. show me. And in the, in the um, entertainment section, <laughs> guess what? Oh, we was there. The reason. <laughs> yeah, it's a place to go. The place to go. The music is fantastic. Yeah. Blah, blah, blah. That's amazing. And man. that was that a means somebody triumph for me. Oh, was it? Yeah. Yeah. Because I've achieved something creating that. Yeah. So a lot of the students that were studying in Manchester who came out with us, they used to come and check the arena out. Yeah, buy a weed, make some music, yeah. Yeah. So up to today, they still remember. It's part of their history. Nice. Some of them, yes. are just like you became a, a playwright. Yeah. There's doctors. Yeah. Teachers, yeah. lawyers, professionals all over. Well said. Scattered man. all over who started at the arena. And they loved it until this day. Yeah. You mentioned the arena, they tell you, oh, Persian. Nick Hucknell. Yeah. Is another product of the arena. You know, make up now. Yeah. He used to come in as a youngster. And one of his tracks that he released and became a hit in England, I used to play the original track in the arena long before he at least two, three years before he released this. What, what what do you mean like an original? Is that a cover of an he original? He covered song? the original. Oh, which which one is that? Money to Tie to Mention. Really? Who's the original then? Hmm? Who's the original then? I'll have to go and check it out oh, again. Okay. Yeah. Wow. And we still you know, with some from time to time he send me messages to me. You know, say, Oh you are you through Kenny in Germany. Right, yeah. I don't know if it <clears throat> depends on when you used to come in the arena. But I used to share a house with Kenny. His name is Kenneth Boot, a Jamaican lad that mm. I grew up with. He used to share a house in a, a beautiful new bungalow out in Little Lever. Right. And <clears throat> he used to come in the arena with me when we used to drive down for the night and he used to bring his bongos. Right. He used to sit on the stage and play it while I'm playing. Right. I don't know if he was coming to the arena. Now I'm too young. Yeah. Mm. And then he, he, was a, he, he was a musician and he joined a group, a group and I went on tour to Germany. They were based in Hamburg on the tour. And the guy that took them to Hamburg was the same guy that gave the Beakers the opportunity. Epstein? Ep no, 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 no. He's a German guy. Oh, okay. Okay, the first opportunity. The first opportunity. Yeah, I'm with you now. 
um, he took them to Germany to be um, support to Pats Domino. Right. Because he had Pats Domino over for American tour. And he took the Beakers to be the support band on the show that okay. was first done, you know. Yeah. But it's the same guy that took Kenny's band to Hamburg. And when the tour finished, he said to Kenny, <coughs> <coughs> if you come back, I'll find work for you. So Kenneth decided that he wasn't going back to coming back to England. Right. He stayed in Germany. But he wasn't getting um it was only him and most of the other band members wanted to come back. Right. So they all left him and the drummer in Germany. So what Kenny did, he started DJing in Germany. About his speakers in this, yeah. You know? And he ended up being the most, one of the most famous DJs in Germany for the music. There was a nightclub that opened up called Third World in Hamburg. And it was like the arena. You know, right. It was the arena all it? over again. What is it? It was fantastic. I went over in, in 81 to do some work there. And it had that speakeasy feeling. It was fantastic. Right. And just like the arena come Friday, Saturday night, but every night it was fun. Right. Every night. It had everything that you could ask for. Could you build a weed in there though? You could, in them days, we used to smoke in the office. Yeah, but you see Persian to Reno, you could build a weed anywhere, yeah. man. You know yeah. what I mean? Nothing no, 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 no. Nothing would ever be like the Reno. No, exactly, exactly, but, see? But third world, I'll give yeah. them credit. Okay, give them credit, but you could just like be in your living room, you know, like in the arena, it's proper just building. I bet you could have just had a cup of tea. <laughs> you know, if you, if you wanted to, just have a cup of tea and a weed. So what happened was then, <clears throat> he became very um, famous in Germany. Mm. And then when the Third World finished, you know, the great thing about Third World, you on a Saturday, on a Friday, on a Saturday night. You know what time you used to leave the house to go to the club? Eleven o'clock. Three o'clock in the morning. Wow, that that's 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 worse than the arena, is it? Three o'clock in the morning, you used to leave the house to go to the club. Wow. And that's when we, we start our session. And what time would you finish in the morning then? What Eight, time? Nine you... o'clock. Ten. Oh, but it's that time in it in the early eighties. It's the time of manumission and all them lot in it. It's like all night, all night in it. It's oh, really no, entered mm. that thing. There were no it? police. Um, yeah, yeah. Harassment like in yeah. England. Yeah. No police yeah. wouldn't be in the club or anything. Yeah. No, it was proper. You know. Yeah. Fantastic, and <clears throat> when. Just like the rain, it had to come to an end because of the building. Mm. I was down. Next thing, the first radio station that came and asked him to come and DJ, to be a DJ, was um, a station called um, OK Radio. In Germany? Yeah. From there, he went to Radio Hamburg. Mm -hmm. And then he was also doing Berlin. He was traveling all over the place. Um, Paris. Mm. He was doing show. You know, he had a, um, a show in Paris. 
Berlin and Hamburg at the same time. And then he was going all over to, over to Yugoslavia, all over Europe. Kenny became so famous. Wow. He's still DJ now. Right. Is he around the same age as you? He's two years older than me. Wow. So he's still DJing that. Do you mind me saying how old you are? Hmm? Do you mind me saying how old you are? He's still DJing at 76. Yeah. Wow. He's on... Um, <clears throat> what? Why have you gone quiet? <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking... Um, yeah. He's on a, 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 a radio station that is um, also on the internet. Yeah. But it's also on there in Germany. And he's on camera. Right. Proper um, movie camera. Right. You know. So um, he's done well for himself, huh? Yeah, he? yeah. Tidenet, D E, is the station. Tidenet. Tidenet. D. -E. Tidenet. Tidenet. D. T. I. D. E. Okay. N. E. T. D. E. And here you'll just show on a Thursday. Right. A two hour show every Thursday. Yeah. So give him a listen, folks. Mm -hmm. What mm -hmm. was your one again? Yours is on Sunday day. What time, Sunday day? Sunday, three o'clock. Yeah. Till five. Till six. Till three, three till six. Show. Okay, that's a long show. Thursday three till six. And what's you? Did no, you say? Sunday. Sunday, three sorry. Six. Three till six and, and Monday. Monday. It's ten a.m. till one p.m. Okay. Yeah. And as I say, it might be the summer. I'll do the other. See the ladies again. You know, go back to the the old school. Yeah. Proper R and B and stuff. Yeah, now that'd be good to sort of say where to really play the music where R and B comes from. Mm -hmm. So, what year did you? You've not said what year did you first go in the arena? In the arena. So what year was you first <coughs> going the arena? In oh, was in the um, mid seventies. No, it's more earlier than that. Hmm? It's earlier than that. I think it was 68. Yeah, yeah, it must be. No, about 1968. Do you remember your first night in the arena? The equipment was scrap. Yeah. You know, try to play on equipment like that, which yeah. is great. <laughs> and that's what it was. <laughs> you know, it was just terrible. Um, yeah, about 1968, and it was all reggae. Yeah, that's what you was playing. Yeah. That's what you was asked to play. Mm. You made some journey, man. You made but some I journey. But I knew what I wanted to play. Yeah, no, exactly, but you did, you, you proper did play it, though. There was, there was objection to what I wanted to do. Yeah. But for some reason, they just let me. To yeah. do what I wanted to do. They were all in his ear, but he didn't come and bother me. Yeah. He must have known. Because he noticed it was turning around. Yeah. The club started to change, it started to become a club. Yeah. And he was starting to make money. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Phil would notice that, wouldn't he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you remember your last night in the arena? Yeah. Go on. It was a New Year's Eve. And I knew that I was going to go back in. Oh. And I stood there and watched everybody enjoy the night. Oh. What year is this now? I think it was 1984, 85. Okay. Somewhere around there. Yeah. I just knew that was the end for me. Oh. 
Wow, that must have been a strange feeling. And maybe this is when my dad is going to leave there. Oh. You've got a kind of cinematic mind because that's a good moment now, you know, to picture somebody knowing that they're leaving and that everybody else are enjoying themselves and not knowing that you're going. Mm. Yeah. Mr. Persian. It became. <clears throat> I knew that's not what I wanted to continue doing, to be honest. I wanted to change. Mm. I wanted to feel fulfilled. Okay. And I wasn't getting the, um, the certain, you know, when you're doing something, you're not feeling it. Yeah, I do. I do. Because what I'm doing now on the radio is what I always wanted to do. Speak easy. Yeah. Music. Music to listen to. Music to enjoy. To chill out to. Chill out to. Learning, hearing new stuff coming through. That was a question I was going to ask before we go. Where do you hear your new music then? Hmm? You know the new music that you want to introduce us to on your radio show? Where do you hear that? When I go to Germany, mm -hmm. Kenny has got a vast library right. of music mm -hmm. in his house. From the ceiling to the floor, all around the living mm -hmm. room, his bedroom. Wow. It's always CDs, mm. all the way, loved and numbered in order. Wow, mm. that's from Siri to that, isn't it? Go on, so you, so you listen to his music? I go in, yeah. I'm not allowed to take and copy anything that I want. Yeah. But it's so much yeah. that I can't. As I go mad for six months, 12, not six months, and um, might be usually I used to go for um, 12 days. Okay. And we're doing other things. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah, the, going out and about. Yeah. See, I haven't got the time to yeah. really. Yeah. So when I come back, I come back with some, and then I. I'll put in the house there and I don't even touch it. Because I'm not one who go wild. Mm. It will be in the house, in my house for six months or more. And I've not even checked if I know what's there. Right. And then maybe one day I'll get up and I'll just play a few CDs and pick out certain tracks that yeah. I think is worth putting into my arm. Um, you know, my former. Yeah. And introduce them on the radio. Yeah. Um, I've got a friend out in um, Tottenham, Ronnie, Dennis's brother. Okay. He's got some beautiful music as well in his house because he collects some fantastic yeah. music. And he'll make tapes, CDs. Come down to my house and say, so, Yeah. Sometimes we'll bring three, four, five CDs and give me. And I'll go through them, pick out tracks yeah. that I know I can use. Yeah. And put them into my music. So you keep so you keep wanting to advance and no new things. Mm. And we just keep you wanting to be <laughs> in nineteen seventy six. Not just not just you. Yeah. You see, when I left the arena, yeah. all that um, stuff, yeah. all the DJs that was out there were doing the same thing, yeah. following the trend, yeah. turning it into a disco, because that's when the discotheque thing started. Yeah. You know, all the clubs yeah, were playing true. the same music. It's true. And the DJs haven't got the bottle. They couldn't. 
Because the club owners wouldn't entertain them. He was lucky like that, though. Because I, what I used to do sometimes in the rain, I used to, mm -hmm. on the, if you know, on a Friday or a Saturday night when the rain is falling and they are getting down, mm -hmm. I would change the music and play something totally out of character with this, what's going on. <laughs> I remember, I remember and on occasion, like the folks just yeah. up in. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I did that purpose. Yeah. Do you know when I remember that? One track I remember that on, Alger Rose Roof Counting. I remember that it's like, the fuck? Do you, do you know what I mean? Like, you know, the different stroke of it. Yeah. I still do that. Yeah. 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 Let the pay, you say, are oh, you paying attention to what? <laughs> you know, just don't you show them that. But we was paying attention. It might not, maybe not with my mind, but my body was certainly paying mm -hmm. attention. Do you know what I mean? You buy rules. I'd say something totally out of character with what's going Like on. what? Tell me some of that. Like, give me a for instance. I remember Roof Garden. I remember thinking, what the. And then just loving it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I wasn't. My bit of just my I'm making a statement. Yeah. Saying, listen you <laughs> you um people. Yeah, you This bastard. is not what the arena is all about. <laughs> yeah. This dance, dance, dance. Go and sit down. It'd be speakeasy. Yeah. yeah. And, and we're just wild, that. yeah. I shouldn't have done that, but it was me getting frustrated. Right. Yeah, this is what I want. And mm. look at you, look at you. And we were just having a ball. You mm. know, like, absolutely having a ball. Uh, so. And I used to say to myself, you know what? What? They don't realise that it's going to come to an end one day. Yeah. And that's when they're going to realise that they're missing. No, but we didn't miss anything, man. We just had a great time. You know what I mean? When it finished. Oh, okay. When it was over and there was no more arena. Yeah. People started to say, oh, yeah, we've lost the play. Yeah. Because I knew that it wouldn't last forever. There was lots of factors to it not lasting, though, weren't there? Like you said, there was the building above that was falling down. Mm. There was the stuff that was happening between Cheat and Mill and Moss Side. It was and just us getting older. Yeah, there's lots of and reasons. And the heavy drugs started to Yeah, the heavy it. drugs. Mm. Yeah. But I tell you what, though, for that time, though, Persian, it was perfect. Everything about it, and I, everything about it was great. Mm. Wasn't it? Everything. The music, the vibe, the people. You with the way you never spoke, you know, and just nodded. Do you know what I mean? The way we said hello to each other and everything, it was all perfect for us mm. at that time. Wasn't it? I'm signing us off, man, on that good, good note. Mm -hmm. <laughs>